so we uh, so how we were discussing that how we are going to account for a credit uh, transaction okay so for credit because uh, since we haven't paid yet 50000 so what how we are going to record it uh, that 50000 we are going to debit 50000 inventory account and credit payables by 50000 so that's how we're going to do it and whenever we are not taking money we're doing a sale uh, which is a cash sale okay in a cash sale how are you going to account for for example you did a uh, you received uh, did a 60000 that's a cash sale on cash sale you actually received cash there then right so debit cash account by 60000 and credit sale income okay asset liability income and expense these are the transactions that actually will take place whenever any transaction is going on any financial transaction you will have to either record an income expense or asset or a liability right so increase in asset is debited decrease in asset is decrease in asset is credited increase in liability is credited decrease in liability once you have recorded the liability, but when you will pay uh, pay off this liability, what you will pass an entry, you will have to decrease the liability in that case. Okay, you will decrease the liability and also you, uh, the cash would be decreased as well, right? Because next, I would be paying 50,000 and I will know that 50,000 will knock off my liability. So when liability is decreased, when it, it, it increased, it was credited, but when it decreased, it would be debited, right? Here I will have to do the entry like this, and now the balance would be zero, and I won't owe anything to the supplier, okay? So this entry again would take place when that amount would be paid. So when amount would be paid, what entry I will pass? Decrease in, decrease in asset I told you is credited. Decrease, increase in asset is, is debited, but decrease in asset, just like cash, would be credited. So when I will pay the amount, it would actually decrease debit cash and it would actually knock off my liability. It would actually credit cash and debit my paper. So that how the entry would be there. So when liability is increased, it's credited. When its uh, liability is decreased, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's debited. And when liability is decreased, it's credited. Income about income. When in increase in income is credited, decrease in income is debited. Increase in expense is debited, and decrease in expense is credited. Right. So the two things here are credited, and two things here are debited. So what are debit? Debit is asset. An expense, we show as the debit entry. And what are credited income and liability? Income and liability is credited. And when these items would be decreased, it would be the other way around. Increase was debit. Increase in expense was debit. When decrease in asset and decrease in expense would take place, it would be, decrease would take place, it would be credit so these are the general rules when increase in income and otherwise it would be decrease in income it would be this is credited so decrease case in case of decrease it would be debited okay sale of goods on uh, uh, i told you cash sales actually receive the money so debit cash credit sales by 60000 one would be a cash account and i will actually receive cash in uh, bank of 60,000 since it uh, was a cash sale. Like uh, at the electronic point of uh, sale, you actually receive the cash. Whenever you're doing the uh, paying for the groceries, yeah, you actually go there, swipe your card, or whenever you're doing any shopping and you're swiping your card, you actually it gets credited, the amount there gets credited from your bank account. So it's a cash sale. But so there it was a uh, debit cash and sale since it's income. Increase in income is always credited. So it was credit 60,000. But in case it, it would have been a credit sale. Yeah. In credit sale, you don't actually receive money there. Right. So what you show 
you show an asset asset is that you haven't received yet so but you haven't received the money yet so you for every customer for which there is some outstanding balance who haven't paid for the sales yet okay for that you will make a receivable account receivable is basically your asset because definitely not now haven't received now but definitely in future it will be an asset for me right when it will be received in cash but right now i cannot report it like i cannot debit cash because i haven't received cash against that and again i will record my income because it was a sale so it it shows me that it's a credit sale so whenever sale of goods is going on if it's it's a cash sale debit bank if it's not a cash sale debit cash or bank if it's not a cash sale if it a cash sale this is the entry but if it's a credit sale debit is done on receivables if it's a cash sale it is debit is done there on cash and income in both case income is coming one we have received cash and one we haven't so definitely increase in income would be credit right okay this is just the beginning and you will uh, understand these things in detail that's why i don't touch the first chapter but since we have already started so i just wanted to give you an overview of that why you get confused about payments whenever when ever you are a buyer yeah you definitely owe money okay you owe money to someone and then you will have to pay the money for that okay so uh, but you are a buyer for a you were a buyer on this hand but on the other hand you are supplier's point of view your supplier's customer right and if you haven't paid yet he would book in his system he would book his receivables right he would book his receivables that's about it it's, it's the, uh, just consider yourself here as a buyer but your supplier's customer right yeah but at times supplier also needs to for example supplier also needs to uh, purchase something from another supplier that company can also need to purchase something or yeah, maybe is producing chair and for that okay he is uh, he is producing chair he sells chair okay if i would be a buyer buying chair from me again i would be a buyer and I, 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 for him i would be a customer but in order to produce chair he might have to purchase wood from a third party right and for that he might have to pay if on cash it would be a cash transaction okay if on uh, but if he is taking credit paid for the wood payment definitely uh, in his system he would be booking payables again that so don't don't get confused don't get confused with that thing here we just touched a little about the double entry right now asset increase asset and expense is debited and income and uh, liability is credited and if it's decreasing it's the other way around so don't get confused right now okay like payment of wages definitely you have hired people and you will be paying them right so it would it's your expense expense i told you is debited increase in expense and when you will actually pay that there will be some decrease in cash as well yeah you would credit bank debit expense credit bank yeah so don't get confused right now yes okay yeah supplier payables customer receivables that yeah, alternative they are being used like this and it's mentioned here the double entry rules increase in asset decrease in liability increase in expense and decrease in income is debited increase in liability decrease in asset increase in income decrease in expense will be credited you will do a lot of double entry in your uh, uh, financial accounting so don't worry right now Okay, that's 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 how we're going to account for all the cost and then trace them back to the 
departments to the divisions so that uh, so as to keep them accountable account, accountable okay so that as to measure their performance whether they have achieved their targets or not okay so everything is interlinked here i told you about the profit centers cost centers revenue centers profit center chapter 1 is done but i just want to touch a little about it so that you actually know how what are they responsible for okay what targets they are given and how their performance is measured so that's the responsibility accounting system that's a slide on uh, uh, centralization decentralization their advantages disadvantages these are the responsibility centers are which is only responsible for cost as cost center revenue is revenue center cost as well as revenue is a profit center and who is responsible ultimately responsible for everything in an organization and also want to generate return on their investment means profit on investment is an investment center manager so uh, i would just take you guys to the whiteboard again that's the last thing we're doing today then we will resume tomorrow so you're talking what is a revenue okay let me just write down the responsibility centers here revenue is what you're getting that's an inflow of cash from sales but that's not your profit because you will have to pay for material labor and expense yeah you have to bear the cost as well so your sale is not your income i told you i told you about revenue revenue is your not your profit you opened up a shop and you started selling shirts okay and in the end of the day you see you have 10000 that's your sale but definitely you have to pay the rent for the shop you have a sales men salary due on you you have got the bills due on you so in the end of the year if you see that's your expense so in the end of the day you see that's your profit 5000 is your profit so what is sale what that's the inflow in the form of cash which is coming to me out of any economic activity that i'm doing like i was a shop owner and i was actually selling shirts in this so responsibility centers we divide company into cost center profit sorry cost revenue revenue center and profit center right so what is the responsibility for a cost center what is basically a cost center let me just uh, tell you what basically is is a cost center cost center could be any department in an organization any activity any project or even any item of equipment could could be any machine as well like a sewing machine in a factory yeah like a mixing machine in a factory or it could be a department like a production department could be any activity like activity in a production department it could be any project that you're uh, uh, doing could be any item of equipment which is consuming or which is incurring cost is a cost center so any it could be any division where where the divisional that division manager would only so what is he responsible for so he would only be responsible for cost so all the cost which will be incurred in his department whatever in whatever way whether by by nature by material labor expense would be traced back to his division because he was responsible for the cost which is being incurred in its area and then he would be accountable for that that's the that's the responsibility accounting that's the responsibility accounting based upon controllability principle what is your responsibility ultimately you are accountable to that yeah and then your performance would be judged upon the target so what target he would be given he would be given certain cost targets for example he was supposed to reduce production cost by 10% yeah 
reduce production cost if he achieved this target like he reduced production cost by 15% that means he would get a bonus but he was his target was 10% he decreased production cost by 8% here is target achieved he would get a bonus here target not achieved he won't be getting a bonus simple is that what you are responsible for is what you can control and whatever would be the cost incurred in your department in your division in your whatever project you carry out activity whatever item of equipment is installed yeah oiling of machinery bills whatever cost would be incurred while in the production or trace to your department your division would be charged to you because you are accountable for that but only for the cost you can control but if you would be charged any cost by head office that would be something you cannot control because you were independent unit here you cannot control a head office cost why you are being charged for that only what you are responsible you would only be held accountable for that so while measuring that cost target they won't include that head of his cost because that is going to give a distorted performance uh, picture of mine and definitely i can, i would won't uh, own those uh, i won't own that reporting i won't own that i would definitely get demotivated if you are going to put me a blame for something i cannot control i told you about that in the controllable cost and uncontrollable cost so all controllable cost i am going to account for so i was only responsible for cost here i am only responsible for revenue so i told you what is revenue revenue from revenue you don't when you deduct your cost you get profit i am not accountable for any cost i am not accountable for cost what i am accountable for is sale revenue only only revenue no cost so my targets would won't be can't be a cost target no i am not concerned about any cost being incurred in any part of my division i am not related to any cost even the bills in my division even the material cost labor cost expenses i i i am not responsible for any of the cost incurred in my division because my target was just to increase sales like salesman revenue targets is not even accountable for a petrol cost that he will go from place to place to sell the brochures or to do the marketing yeah he won't be accountable for that because he is not accountable for any cost in his division he is entirely responsible for sales so his target would also be sales target yeah daily sales targets monthly sales targets weekly sales targets yeah he has sales targets so if he his sales target was to achieve uh, increase sales by 20% he increased it by 25% he would get a bonus 20% he only achieved a target of 18% he won't get a bonus so this is a system accountability framework in which you would be held responsible for something you could control only so i would only be given credit for income generated by my division because that's the income i generated that was the income i could control yeah if i if any income was generated by head office see when you in a decentralized structure this is a decentralized structure we talking about in a decentralized structure you won't be accounted for any cost or revenues incurred by the head office because that's something you cannot control your authority and control is only what is going on in your division what revenue i will generate that is what i could control if head office is generating any equipment by disposing of for example any assets they got some uh, revenue definitely that revenue i won't account for here i haven't done that i, I can't take take credit for head office no if i can't take credit for uh, if i can't if i shouldn't be accountable for any cost incurred in the head office that's not my cost so any revenue generated by head office is not shouldn't be traceable to my division right that would be unfair as well if you can't take the cost blame you shouldn't take the revenue blame as well that would be unfair as well so what you are responsible for is what you could control and you would only be accountable for that and when evaluating your performance and seeing whether you get the bonus or not okay that's performance assessment 
in performance assessment whenever you will work in any organization you will be given a target and then you will be assessed whether you have achieved the target or not and then you will be given monetary rewards that's what the system of uh, accountability is that's the system of performance because if you are going to give a monetary benefit to an employee only then he is going to work for it only then he would be motivated why do we work you work for money no yeah so that's how that's the system of control you give a set of targets and then they make them accountable for that but only for things they can control otherwise they would be demotivated right if you added head of his cost and without adding head of his cost that the cost target was achieved but with adding head of his cost the target is not achieved and he is not getting bonus if i tell you that you are not getting bonus just because i added an uncontrollable cost charge some un uncontrollable cost to your division would definitely you would say why no this is not my cost okay so i would only account take responsibility for things i can control so i should only be accountable for things i can control and my performance assessment should be around those things only that's res responsibility counted profit center manager uh, uh, he would be responsible for cost as well as revenue okay so whatever is cost incurring in its division that he could control would only be charged to you and only revenue generated by this division would be charged not any revenue from head office would be charged here no why not head office cost is coming why revenue my own revenue my own cost should be traceable to me okay and my target would be profit related now my target would be profit related means the responsibility is increasing yeah from cost to and revenue now both are there so it becomes profit center manager yeah middle layer manager yeah yeah hi and then it will go one level up if he would be responsible for investment things going on as well that would be an investment center we won't touch that today let's finish profit center so profit center the target would be profit related okay for example my sales were 1 lakh that's the income i generated uh, that's the sales i generated right revenue but here cost is not my uh, deducted yet but definitely it's not my profit my target would be profit related so maybe my target i'm given is gross profit margin i need to achieve a gross profit margin uh, i of for example 20% i need to achieve a net profit margin Uh, operating profit margin of for example or i need to achieve a net profit margin what is that what is that i'm just going to explain okay for example my sales was 1 lakh i would deduct my production cost first it will give me my gross profit means i was selling shirt i would only deduct the direct and indirect cost incurred within the production of uh, that shirts direct cost would be prime cost and indirect cost would be production over it so only that cost is deducted for example it was 50000 and the cost would only be deducted for the shirt sold not for the shirt which are still lying in the inventory okay it is cost of good sold so imagined i sold 1 lakh the production cost was 50000 i earned a gross profit of 50000 now my target gross profit was 20000 what is gross profit margin what is profit percentage of your sales what is profit percentage of your sales that's my gross profit formula would be gross profit divided by sales into 100 now what is my gross profit margin here 50000 out of 100% sales what is the profit i earned 50000 divided by 1 lakh what is my profit guys tell me what is my profit in percentage 50% is it 50% mean you 
just assume you got you uh, uh, earned 100 yeah then you deducted your cost to be 50 means what is your profit now profit is only 50 but what is profit out of 100 if i split that 100 it would be split it into cost and profit what is profit percentage of 100 is 50%. What is cost percentage of 100? It would be 50%. Means out of 100, I received 100%. 50% was my cost and 50% was my profit. Any problem in understanding this concept? So what was my gross profit margin here? Now tell me, is my profit target achieved or overachieved? My target was to earn a gross profit margin of 20%. Means even if I had got 20,000, I would have been given a bonus. And now I earned more than 20,000. So it's not profit, it's not 20% of sales, it is. Guys, you're not talking. You're not answering me. Are you with me? Are you guys with me? Yes, yes. What is profit percentage of sales? That's margin. You have, what's the margin in this? Uh, uh, what is the margin? You have often talked about, uh, for example, you are talking to a salesman and he, and he tells you a price and he says, what is the margin? Just tell me what is the margin? He would never tell you the margin is keeping, putting uh, on the top of cost. What is the margin? Margin is whatever profit is charging you, it would be some percentage of sales. Yeah, so margin is profit percentage of sales. It's profit divided by sales. Okay, okay. My example is continued. I only deducted production cost. There would be some non-production cost as well. Non-production, definitely. Why was it gross okay. profit? Why was it gross profit? Because only production cost was deducted. Now if I deduct my non-production cost of 10,000, now tell me what would be my, another thing here would be my operating profit. Second thing is my operating profit. What is operating profit? Whenever you deduct production cost as well as the non-production cost, what you get is your operating profit. So from here, for example, what is my operating profit? My operating profit here is 40,000. What is my operating profit here? My operating profit is 40,000. Operating profit is the profit which is coming from your normal uh, business operations. For example, I was selling shirt, whatever cost has been incurred in producing shirt as well as in distributing shirt into the shop, like distribution cost, like what or uh, like marketing cost, non-production cost. So I would only deduct my, from sales, I would only deduct my total cost. What would I get? And total cost, which cost? Only production and Non-production cost, when I would deduct, I would get my operating profit, which is basically profit from my operations, right? But if I would only deduct my production cost, it would be gross profit, right? If from gross profit, I would also deduct my non-production cost, then I would get, then both production and non-production cost are deducted, then I would get my operating profit and from operating profit definitely there would be some interest cost as well as some taxes you need to pay to the government what would be my interest cost definitely maybe i have some loans on my head as well on which i will have to pay the interest as well so what is operating profit basically operating profit is basically profit before interest and tax what it is Profit before interest and tax. 
for example my interest and tax was operating profit was 40000 right now tell me what is operating profit margin in this case 40000 is what percentage of 1 lakh operating profit divided by sales into 100 now what is operating profit here if 1 lakh what is operating profit guys profit mm, margin sir, this case four four 40 profit 40 yeah 40 percent uh, 40 percent yeah it is 40 percent right 100 percent is sales right what you're earning is 100 percent nothing has been deducted from that right got it mm. Yeah. What you earn is 100%. Then you try to realize what is your profit. So you start deducting your cost as well. Yeah. Then you will know what is ultimately your earning. Right. So when you deduct your production cost, what you get is gross profit. When you deduct your non-production cost, you get your operating profit. And when from operating profit you deduct interest as well as your tax, what you get is you get your net profit. So there are three things you need to understand what it is. One is a gross profit. Another one is a profit from operations, which is profit before interest and tax. And then if you from operating profit, you deduct interest and tax as well, what you get is your net profit. So gross profit as a percentage of sales was 50%. Yeah. What does it tell me? 100%, 100% if, if in, uh, what was inflow was 100%, but outflow, outflow is 50%. That means 50% was your production cost as well. That's how you get 50% here. Got it? Yes. Please, uh, mom, hear me. Yeah. Uh, may you make uh, some example numerically, please? Two Isn't or three examples, it will be so good. Isn't it, it a will numerical be... example? Isn't it a numerical? Yes. Uh, numerically, uh, in your calculator, it means. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing yeah. it. That's Thank why I've opened up yeah. the calculator as well. Mm -hmm. So, the gross profit margin. Gross profit is 50,000, right? Sales was one lakh into 100 that makes 50 percent gross profit margin is 50 percent now operating profit margin divide put operating profit in the numerator this and sales in the denominator you will get what operating profit margin so putting operating profit in the numerator 40,000 divided by 1 lakh. I took very easy numbers so that you can actually you're able to guess what the percentage could be. That's why I took 1 lakh. Otherwise, I could have taken it 25,000. Then it wouldn't have been a very easy figure. Yeah? 2 lakh 50,000. Then it wouldn't have been a very easy figure. So gross profit, it's understandable. 50,000 you're getting out of 100, that's 50%. That makes 50%. But 40,000 you're getting out of 1 lakh, that makes 40%. Operating profit margin is 40%. But that's not your ultimate net profit. Because now you also have interest and tax to pay. Yeah? And that makes, in total, that makes 5,000. So what is your net profit? 40,000 minus 5,000 net profit is 35,000. Net profit is 35,000. Net profit margin, formula for net profit margin, net profit divided by sales into 100. Net profit divided by sales into 100. Gross profit Margin, 50,000 divided by 1 lakh. That's your gross profit. Now, operating profit margin. It's going to be 40,000 divided by 
वन लैक नाउ नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन वुड बी थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाय वन लैक एंड दैट मेक्स थर्टी फाइव परसेंट नाउ द थर्ड फिगर हियर थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड इज वट परसेंटेज ऑफ वन लैक मीन्स यू आर्न वन लैक एंड नाउ यू ओनली when you calculated your profit in the end after deducting all the cost in the end also interest and tax also interest and tax after it net profit what you get is only you started with 1 lakh right but after deducting all the cost production non production and then interest and tax what is the net profit Here you get is thirty five thousand. What is thirty five thousand percentage of one lakh? So easy. Gross profit. Production cost was fifty percent. Gross profit you earned as fifty percent. Okay, let me tell you like this. If hundred percent. Okay, if hundred percent was your sale. Production cost was what percent? Fifty percent. That's why you only earned fifty percent because production cost fifty percent was your production cost. So gross profit is fifty percent only. But after deducting non-production cost, you only have forty percent. Means again there was ten percent your non-production cost. Again there was ten percent your non-production cost. Okay. So if i get 40% i put 100% if i put 100% here and i am getting 40% here now tell me 60% is my total cost how you reconcile the 60% if 100% you added and 40% is what you are getting means what was your cost how you reconcile that 60% 50% was your production cost and 10% was your 50% was your production cost and 10% was your non production cost that's why when you get 1 lakh why you got 40000 because 60000 was your cost as well got it or not 